They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in the farmer's kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. cook something good now funding for tim farmer's country kitchen is brought to you by the city of stanford kentucky come back home to stanford l81 bottling company taste love and share the tradition Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen, the farm edition. You know what? We haven't visited with the animals for a while. I know it. Every time we have tried to visit with you guys with the animals, the skies have opened up and it just quit raining right now. That's so right. hopefully we'll get one little break here. You know, we started out, if we look back with Janine, had three sheep. That's right. <laughs> now we can practically count sheep as we go to sleep and have all the M names going right over top of our head. That's right. We have 13. Now, what are our plans to do with these sheep? We're gonna obviously separate the ram very shortly because... We don't want more babies in the winter. We don't want winter babies. That's right. So June is the time to pull him out. Right. We can have him up in November probably. Because we got five months to, for babies, right? It's about right. a five month process. That's exactly right. Right. Now, Katahdin's have been very easy to take care of. They are. The only thing you really have to do is worm them. We are prone to worms around this area and you have to clip the hooves. Right. Now, our plan is to probably raise three lambs a year for our consumption. Right. Now, we can sell out to, if we want to sell one or two, mm -hmm. the girls that we originally got will die of old age on right. this farm. They're gonna be They're pampered favorites. and spoiled. That's They're right. sweet. They like their ears scratched. The other ones, have, as we have gotten more and more sheep, We've almost run out of names. Um, Probably a good idea. Yeah, and they've, they're, you know, they're not as easy to scratch behind right. the ears. They're a little less right. tame. But we've learned a lot of stuff with our dogs. Mm -hmm. We found out that Pyrenees are wonderful dogs. Each yes, one has are. its own personality. Yes. Some of them like to chase chickens. Uh-huh. Some of them like to eat chickens. Uh-huh. But they can be trained. Right. They want to please. That's right. So we went to the chicken swap today in Lawrenceburg. So we went over there today, walked around a little bit. Now, because Millie, um, Likes chicken. She's got a taste for chicken. She doesn't really eat them. She plays with them till they. She plays. Yeah, rough. plays too hard. So you remember yeah. that? And this is just part of farm life. Trust yeah. me, this happens. The ones that we raised up in right. the incubator are no when more. That, yeah, so, not nice. And bless her heart, she's such a sweet dog. She was just trying to play rough. That's right. She felt bad. She had them all in a row. Yeah, she, she <laughs> felt bad after we had uh, a talk. So, anyhow, we went to the chicken swap. We looked at, at everything. Found a young man. He had. Uh, two Rhode Island Reds and two of the black uh, sex link chickens. Okay. And we bought those so we could have some more eggs because right. we provide our family members, Kelly. Kelly likes her. She's she been likes. taking all her eggs. I know it. She's got to get more eggs. But that's when they start laying, they're just a little bit, a little bit behind. Yeah. They're not there yet. But I'm going to slowly introduce those in to make sure that Rocky or Millie or uh, nobody's going to mess with our chickens. Right. So some of the maintenance that we need done around here is Milton. Sometimes needs a haircut. Yes, he, he does. He looked like a puffball. Yeah, he did. Now, more and more people are finding out that alpaca fiber has many, 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 many uses, and it's hypoallergenic. It, well, I'll tell you what. Let's let Alvina explain all that, because she is the alpaca expert, and let's give Milton a haircut. Okay.
if we brush them before we get it off, it'll be easier to get it clean afterwards. Yeah, that's where all the topical stuff is, the big stuff. Alvina is back. Good to see you again. Good to see you, sir. You know what? You made this process look fairly easy. Well, I'm glad, because <laughs> it's not. You know what? You have, you said 80? Yes, sir. At least 80 yourself. Head. And you just did several the other day. So you, you got it down almost 10 minutes. It take, took a little bit. This is the second year that we've shorn our own herd. So, and I just learned last year. So it's a little bit. So here we have the whole process of, of shearing back here behind us. So basically, you drive two T-posts, you harness them mm -hmm. so they can't get away. How long did it take you to figure this out? How much of this is, is textbook stuff and how much is Alvina's process? Well, we did have a professional shearer come and give a pretty intensive three-day class. And uh, at the end of the class, we took about 40 minutes per head. Right. So, I mean, because you are, you are handling a an instrument that could be lethal. I mean, this thing could cause some serious damage. So uh, so you go slow at first to make sure that you're safe. Because that's really, at the end of the day, you know, if, if you go fast and you end up, end up cutting them, then you're gonna be there a whole lot longer right. bandaging, patching them, patching them up, you know. It pays off to go slow in the, in the beginning. But yeah, once you get the hang of it and you just have that awareness of which angle you have to go in certain body part areas to minimize the, the risk of cutting them, um, then it goes much quicker. So this is the blanket. This is the prime fiber. This looks better from uh, the inside than the out. Milton liked to roll in the duty a bit. Yeah, yeah, his outside was a little dirty, but I mean, feel that. Wow. That was what was close to the skin. And we talked off camera a little bit about, you know, how some people, wool is, if you look at it under a microscope, it's kind of spiky. Wool has barbs. And lanolin. Yes. Um, if somebody's allergic to wool, it's usually two things. It's either the lanolin, this is the oil that sheep produce, or the fiber itself has um, scales along it. All protein fibers do. Um, but the ones on wool stick out away from the fiber shaft, so it causes a little bit of a prickle. Wakaya alpaca has half that, and then Surrey alpaca has half of Wakaya. So wow. it feels softer, even if it's the same grade. So that's why it is so desirable. It is. Mm -hmm. One of the many reasons. You know, a lot of people have forgotten and have gotten so far away from the land, from the farming process, from the fact that, okay, these mm -hmm. are lambs and we're gonna eat these lambs. Mm -hmm. No apologies here for that, I'm sorry. Is there a market for the meat on some of these Whoa. animals? Absolutely. At a certain point, their fiber quality does degrade, and what, how many years that is just depends on their genetics. Right. Some maintain it well into their teens and sometimes 20, but some of them aren't born with good fiber, right. you know? So it's up to us to breed for good fiber, which, you know, we want, because this right. is good stuff. But once it does degrade, then they go to the great green pasture in the sky, and they make a really healthy, nutritious meat product as well. You know what, these were raised, these animals in their original wherever they were brought up. The, Let's talk about that. The Andes, Altiplano. For meat and fiber. Yes, sir. Or fiber and meat. Oh, <laughs> you, yeah. Yeah, And absolutely. you know what? If you haven't had it, it's amazing meat. It is, there's zero wild gamey taste in it. It's some of the sweetest, best protein you can find out there. It's we delicious. really enjoy it. But this right here is probably the main the This main is thing. the main crop. I mean, the good thing, I mean, you, you compare it to other red meat animals, for instance, um, which are a sole use, like they're raised for the meat. Uh, alpacas are growing fiber the whole time, so you might as well get this good crop off of them, you know, because that's what they're really raised for. And then really it's the culls that go to meat, but it's, it's such a high quality product that you get two really good harvests out of them. Now, when you take this back home, is there mm -hmm. any, what's what's the process? Do you wash this in any way? Shape? Oh, gosh, yeah. If you were wearing a sweater for a year, how dirty do you think it would be? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know where Milton's been. So, <laughs> so, yeah, so you don't want poop in your sweater. Poop's not good. No, no, seed heads, burrs, all that kind of stuff. So we hand pick it as best we can first. Okay. And then um, uh, if we are going to process it ourselves into clothes, then I wash it in my bathtub. You know, we just use a Dawn dishwashing soap. Um, sometimes it takes a couple washes and then 
and you know, like four or five rinses. And then from there, we gotta brush it so all of the fibers are aligned, so they're all going in the same direction. And then from there, it can be spun into yarn. And then you gotta turn the, use some other method to turn the yarn into clothes. Because it's not just about the clothes too, it's about how everything works together. It's a system and that's how we do small sustainable agriculture is you have all these different plants and animals that are working together. And so clothes is a part of that as well. I mean, it's such an essential thing that we take for granted, Flo food, clothes, shelter. You know, all of, all of them come from nature. Wow. Everything so else is used for other purposes. The neck is good for, for yarn too. It's just typically not as uniform in length. Uncle Milty? Oh my! <laughs> they can be. Who is that? <laughs> His pants are a little uneven. <laughs> <laughs> They're like help. So, so right now, somebody's saying, "I want to go out there." Mm -hmm. How do they find you? Look up our website. It's RiverHillRanch.us for United States. And we have a tab there that you can click on and learn about the tours and the times and all that kind of stuff. And then wow. even though we may not have our own product in the store right now, we have all of theirs. So we have socks, hats, gloves, sweaters, even dresses. Wow. Made out of Outback. Hats? Yeah. Hats. Yeah. Have you seen my Outback hat? I have not. Yeah. It's a felt hat. It's made right, right down the road, Springfield, Kentucky. And um, it's like I Indiana tell you what, Jones type yeah, thing. it has that look to it. But um, because alpaca naturally wicks moisture, it's not chemically treated with anything, but it's waterproof. You can wear it out in the rain, and uh, it's um, steam set, so you can wad that sucker up into a ball. I especially love at farmers market, telling little boys, wad it up into a ball, <laughs> and their mom's looking at me like. Sure. And so then it comes yeah. right back to the yeah, original shape. Yeah, just right back into its shape. Son of a gun. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming out today. Well, and thank you for having us. And, and hope to see you soon. Yes, Uncle sir. Uncle Milty's so much more happy. I bet he's, uh, he's much cooler. He's chilling. Oh, yeah. Literally. But one more thing that's happened around the farm here shortly. And people have been asking about the bees. What happened to your bees? Well, guess what? Bees weren't looking so good. In fact, in February, when we had a nice couple warm days, they left. I know. It's awful. Okay, we went to Florida, came back. I walked by the cabin, and I got a surprise. And here's Alan to tell us a little bit more. Alan Martin. Oh, Very man. unusual situation back here. I had the perfect hive. When we talked about how great it was. It we was got, doing good, yep. We got honey off of it. Was it in January when you and I talked? January, February, we got this huge warm. Right, yeah, it's right warm, at the end of January, yeah, first February. Long yeah. spell of warm. Came out one day and they were moving and, and going, looking for stuff. A couple days later, gone. And then you told me. There was, there's been a bunch of people that's had that happen. Happened to you? Yep, happened to me, yeah. How many? How I many? lost 13. Wow. They're gone. Where did they go? in February? Actually, they'll, they'll pack up and move out, and really when they move out like that, they're, they're gonna die, because that time of the year, there's nothing, there's no flowers. So they're there's, a little there's confused about the warm temperature. Right, and, it, you know, it could be a number of anything, it could be mites or anything like that. Didn't see any in your hive, you know. If you ask 15 different people, beekeepers, you're gonna get 14 different answers, so I mean. They've moved back then. I mean, from nowhere, they moved. Yeah. Some bees have come, a swarm it's, has found a hive. Is that common? It's happened to me a couple of times. If you have a hive sitting out and uh, they'll uh, just going out when the scouts go out and look around, you know, they're, they realize, you know, hey, this is a pretty good home. So uh, you see them swarming in a tree, they'll just either go into a house, a building, or a hive. That's a big bunch of bees. That's a bunch of bees in there. So it's a, a good swarm. hive. Oh, yeah. So what do you recommend? Now, this is obviously maybe not going to happen very often, but since it's happened to me, 
what would you recommend me do? You've already found the queen. The queen's in there, good looking queen in there. She's a big queen. Now, was the queen in the top or, or bottom? She was in the top box. You're gonna leave her in the top? I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna swap it and put it down at the bottom. That way they'll pack their stores up the top because she's looking for a place to lay. Right. And what they'll do is they'll start moving all the honey back up to the top box. And it's, it's better just to move the box than it is just try to move her. They're, they're working on making some stores in there. You know, that, that one box is, you know, they're, they're starting to put honey at the, one thing I would do be put a feeder on the hive. Right. And give them that extra boost. Gotcha. You know, throughout the summer stuff, because right now we're kind of at the end of the bloom season. Mm -hmm. This yep. is a feeder. It's been sitting in my garage. It's got dust in it. So basically, you just set that in there, pour it's just sugar water. Pour sugar water in it. And boom, they're good to go. Good to go. You're dressed up. I'm not. So as usual, I'm going to cower behind the camera and watch <laughs> you do what you do. All right, so I'll stand back. Thank you, man. All right, brother. When we were down south having our key lime pie. Right, every night. <laughs> every night. From, and it, that was part of the fun of the trip. They were all different. Yeah. And we gained 10 pounds. So, that's okay. Now, one place down south where we had the key lime pie, they had it served with fresh fruit. That was my favorite. Now, wasn't that, uh, you You take a bite of the key lime pie and have a blueberry, it just a raspberry, pretty. a strawberry. And it was yeah. a nice presentation, too. So, we'll do that in a little while. But first, we got to get some fresh strawberries. Guess what? What? Facebook page. I saw this little message, hey, we've got a strawberry farm in Wilmore. Let's go to Wilmore yeah. and pick some strawberries. Where are we today, first of all? We're at the Wilmore Berry Farm uh, in Wilmore, about three miles out towards High Bridge. I was looking at my Facebook posts and there was somebody that said, hey, we got some strawberries over here. And I love spontaneity. Oh. And I love the fact that you have this, you're talking about your dad and your husband and you're doing five acres over here and five acres over here. You got chickens. What all do you have out here? Um, well, my dad started it um, probably about 12 years ago and moved out here with my mom and started raising strawberries. And we moved into blackberries and cherries and peaches and pears and plums. Um, and then we expanded more with chickens and meat and hogs and um, just really tried to give our grandchildren and children a good, healthy way of living. So can you uh, take a little tour? Yes, absolutely. These are, look at your berries. We have the, some blackberries here and then we have another um, patch up on the hill. And then we, of course, grow all kinds of vegetables and sell those. We're part of the Wilmore Farmer's Market. As the produce comes on, we try to take it down there. and. So, so strawberries are seasonal. What do you have coming up? They here? are. Um, black raspberries are next. We're pretty much at the end of the strawberry season right now. And then we'll have the blackberries um, the first part of July. I always try to think of it. Uh, Fourth of July, blackberry cobbler. <laughs> so that's how I remember that. Um, and then all the fruit, it's usually later in the summer, um, end of July, August, just depending on the varieties. So how do people look you guys up? Uh, we have a Facebook page, Wilmore Berry Farm, um, and then our phone numbers are on there. And we try to update the page um, to let everybody know what's coming up and the days we're open and closed. And so this is the part where me and Nikki go, you actually have a bucket pre-picked. <laughs> but we're going to pick a few too. Yes, that'd be great. Thank I'd you like so it. much You're for the You're welcome. Visit. Thank you so much. We uh, love your show. Well, thank you so much. It's thunder. <laughs> now, I don't want to go inside because it's been raining so much, but let's run inside. The okay. ingredients are laid out. Let's make our key lime pie, put it in the refrigerator, let it chill a little bit, and then we're going to have a wonderful dessert. Yum. So, Jupiter, Florida is where your grandmother ended up when they retired right. from the restaurant business. And she made, this is her it's cookbook. Like, it's, it's over 50, it's probably 50 it's years old. It's a church, old. it's the church cookbook right. from where they went to church in Jupiter, Florida. But it were all her recipes, but she would give name them for right. you or somebody This is else. all hers and you see people like were from Michigan and all over she just put different names on them and this was before I was really little when they mm -hmm. did this and so she had saved this for me and there's a letter in here that she wrote to me to make sure I get this. Back in 38? Yeah back in 20s. But anyways this has got the best it's little but it has every recipe's amazing because they're all hers. 
And she wow. just put everybody else's name on it. I love now, it. Now, you know what was funny is when we went to Southern Florida, and when, you know, sometimes we have to escape the cold. Right. You go down there and everybody has key lime pie. Now, everybody. And, now, it's a different kind of lime. Now, we've got regular limes. And everybody's pie tasted different. Everybody. Exactly. And the consistencies were different. Right. Some people had, it was like real, uh, like a gelatin yeah. type thing. Some people was more like a cheesecake. Hers is more of a whipped. It's really light tasting. Almost like a lime cheesecake, but it's delicious. And it's real creamy, a lot of eggs. There's three ingredients. This is it. You have eggs, you have three limes in the actual mix itself, and then one for decoration, and eat bread. That's it? That's it. And we cook it. So Very simple. Here's what let's do. Now, we, we cheated because we were in a hurry and we right. were outside messing with the animal. We have a store-bought graham, graham cracker crust. Right. You can make your own. What we're going to do first is we're going to split. We have four eggs. We're going to use one whole egg in here, but the other ones we're going to divide the yolks mm -hmm. from the whites. And we're going to mix that up. And once that's beaten and gotten thick, we're going to add our Eagle Bram. Gotcha. Just a little bit of that, mix it. And then we're going to add a third cup of lime juice and we're going to let that get thick. It's smelling really good. I just want to move this because we want to use the same bowl. See how it's kind of thickened up mm -hmm. a little bit? Man, it smells good. Isn't it already? All right, we're going to let that set there. I'm going to clean this up real quick and we're going to beat some eggs. All right, what's next? All right, now we have the three egg whites left. Remember right. that? We're going to pour these in. And we're going to make this like a meringue. We're going to make it thick. So we're just going to watch that beat. Yeah, that to that. And when it's thick. done, we're going to mix it. I'm a good mixer man. And look at there. Is this simple or what? It is. That's it. Three ingredients. We want all this. See how nice that is? You know what's really odd? I don't make many desserts when I really think about it. You're like the dessert queen. But you eat them. Yeah, I eat them. I'm happy to eat them. Now, we don't want to mix this in. We want to fold it. She put in her recipe book to fold it in. So we want all this. Okay. You can't go wrong with this. Isn't that something how three little egg whites can puff up yes. like that? From our chickens. They're doing their job well. It's we there. need a few more. Folding. I'm folding. Gently folding mm -hmm. it in. Just going to make it thick. Is that the simplest recipe you ever saw? All right, that's it. We're going to put it in the pan. Just like that. We're only going to cook it for 15 minutes on 250 because gotcha. you're pretty much just cooking the egg in there. There we go. In the oven? In the oven. I'll open the door. 250 degrees, 15, 15 minutes. minutes. Just enough to let it set up. Right. I can't stand anymore. It's beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and tear it apart. I made a little drizzle. That's just mm. half sugar and it's half lime juice with a little zest. Delish. You made it beautiful. Nice lime flavor. And you know, you could put food coloring if you want it to be greener, but that's something that yeah. we don't like to do. You won't do that. Let that sink in, you can really taste that lime. Not good. And the fresh fruit just picked today. Yes. Went well with that. We're gonna have to freeze these. Make some jam or shortcake. Good job, Mrs. Farmer. Oh, thank you. Good job on the decorating. I can take you everywhere to decorate That's with exactly you. That's exactly right. That was delicious. <laughs> you got to try this at home. That's good. You know what? Now's a good time to talk about our Facebook page, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Like it. Tell your friends about it. Follow us there. See where we're going, what we're doing. Also, timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. We have literally hundreds and hundreds of recipes for you to choose from that you might not have seen before. And remember, it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. See you next week on Tim Farms Country Kitchen. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to CKY Canoe, Kentucky, Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Lodge Cast Iron, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by Good Foods Co-op, 
Kentucky Sheep and Wool Producers Association and the Kentucky Goat Producers Association, Marksbury Farm Market, Weisenberger Mill, Your Village Shop, Diamond Gusset Jeans, the original Gusset Jean, careful craftsmanship, continual improvement, Diamond Gusset Jeans, born and worn in the USA since 1987.